before I came, I thought I'd have a look in my passport and um, understand how many times I'd been to Sydney. And to my horror, or horror, shock, um, it was 93 times. And then I realized that we'd been coming here since 1998. And um, interesting, it's a progression of a journey and it's a progression of a city. And we've seen that pro progression and we feel that we've been part of it. And I think that's a very important thing. And in 1998, when we came for Philip Street, um, now Deutsche Bank Place, um, there was a new movement, a movement about the ground, a movement about how the city would connect together at ground level. We continued that process in Lumiere and then on to Central, Central Park, um, where we're in the process of completing our final building there um, at the moment. Um, so all good stuff. So what's coming next? What's the next step? What's the next step for this city and what's the next step for the next 20 years? Central um, Circular Key, Circular Key Tower. Um, very interesting site um, located in the, at the front, forefront of the city um, amongst all these other new towers. And then when you look at the new towers, all coming up from the 1990s, a huge progression of towers. And Circular Quay sitting 265 metres high, um, 67,000 square metres of, of space. But really, you have to look back. You have to look back to look forward. And it was really this city, the, the quality of the city, and it was the city development plans, the DCP and the LEP, when we first came here, that were developing the rules for this city, which you can now begin to see the benefits of those rules. And there are very, very few cities with such a comprehensive set of rules for daylight, for access, um, and for the, uh, for the integration at ground level. And since 1998, the rules have just gone on and grown and grown, and have now formed a huge network which, uh, which acting together is all acting for the benefit of the city. Um, that can now be seen. You, you walk around, the paving has improved, the, the quality of the, of the built environment, the quality of landscape. And that really takes us back to the beginning and we can see the progression of, city, of the city and we can see the progression at Circular Quay. So our site, placed here in the middle, uh, in the middle, almost uh, centered between the bridge and the, and the Opera House, um, looking north, um, but quite constrained. And it was a very interesting project in that it was, in, again, forethought of the city to actually open up part of the ground plane and change the GFA rules to uh, uh, effectively combine two, two uh, plots at ground level together and thereby create a public space um, for the city. So at ground level, we have 200, 200 George to the right here and the building 178 George Street, which begins to be removed uh, right up to the edge of, of Jackson's on George next door. Um, between the buildings, we then have the building 178 to the front and the building to the back, both removed and opening up the, opening up the, the ground plane completely. So we have two sites, the site of the tower at the back there in the green and the site of the, of the new city square onto George Street. Um, quite a complicated site in terms of uh, the change of levels between Pitt Street and George Street. Uh, George Street four, four metres higher than Pitt Street and how that works together, but the opportunity for the laneways between. And obviously creating a heart, creating a new centre with a new community building in the orange square on the diagram. So, the laneways. Uh, what a fantastic piece of city of city that this is becoming for Sydney. The, the quality, the improvement of the laneways, both day and night, creating spaces for social interaction, even for marriage, for selfies. Um, 
how could we, how could we generate uh, similar spaces? So looking here at Rugby Place, this is between the buildings, there's the new building. And very importantly, in the centre of this city, you'll see in the centre of the plot, you see this slot running up the building. And that slot is a connection through the base of the building and out the other side. And that slot really becomes a generator for the tower as the, as the structure of the tower develops later. Uh, you can see the bridge on the right-hand side there uh, coming across from George Street four metres above um, and linking to the entrance of the tower and then the laneways moving around the base of the tower from Pitt Street. Uh, again, charged with, with retail, with food and beverage, um, uh, places for interaction, places for uh, uh, social, social meeting and greeting. Um, the entrance to Pitt Street uh, coming up, rising up to the entrance to the main building and then pulling you through to the other side of the building. And in the distance there, the grey area, that will be the, the community building um, on the square. And so how does the square look? So this is the square onto George Street. Jackson's on George, refurbished and, uh, and, um, and uh, morphed into a new, a new building. Uh, the new community building at the base of the building, and then uh, Circular Key Tower um, sitting, sitting behind, uh, in, the, in the space behind with the laneways running around the base. Um, the tower itself, uh, looking at the tower itself, looking north, uh, we've got views of the, obviously views of the um, bridge, the opera house, uh, towards Barangaroo, and then back, very importantly, back to the city, and the views from the city to the back of the tower. There it is centred in the city, in the, in the centre there. Um, solar, the, uh, the sun moving across the northern, northern elevation, really uh, allowing maximum daylight penetration to the building. And therefore, we, we, uh, we place, the, uh, we place the, the core at the back of the building, an offset core, uh, allowing views out um, Column-free space for total flexibility within the building, um, and the building then coming down and hitting the ground um, in the laneways. And very importantly, this through-site link really became the generator for the building. Uh, the purple through-site link to Underwood Street there uh, was really the uh, the generator of the of the structural form. So as the as the link rises and as you, you take the envelope and take the, uh, the V-shaped cut through the building to the top of the building, as the building forms, the uh, force generation of the building began to give us this, this tree-type structure because of the disconnected structure around the, around the total envelope of the building. So from working through in November, the tree, the tree structure and the steel structure with the slot running right the way through the building. This is, open, this is the structure opened out flat of the building. Uh, moving through to a hybrid and now to the concrete structure that we're finally moving forward to. Again, uh, reducing the amount of material, uh, looking at the, uh, the sustainability of the building and the environmental qualities of the building as we go. And so the progression of the design uh, through to where we, are, where we are today on the right there. In section, again, a building of many, of many levels um, with the retail, uh, the retail laneways at the base, uh, the lobby at ground floor, and then moving into business innovation spaces with higher floor to floor heights. And we'll come back to those. The city, the, the, the city garden halfway up for use uh, used by the public, and then the, the commercial tower sitting above. The business innovation spaces, really the catalyst for tenants, the catalyst for new tenants, the catalyst for new tech companies to develop within the city. The, city, the, the tower itself, very hemmed in by the rest of the towers, but a study of the facade shows that we've only put the, uh, the solar shading where it's needed and maximize the views out at all time. So that's our next, uh, our next uh, step for Sydney. And um, we hope there'll be another 20 years. Thank you.